Paramount Plus has released the first three episodes of a new show about a school of dead teenagers called School Spirits. And on this podcast, we're going to play some games, talk about the plot, and figure out what's going on. So let's start off with a Hollywood ghost game. I've got four different facts here, one of which is false, and you have to determine which one it is, okay? Okay. All right, so you know Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah. And he was dating Megan Fox for a while. I'm not sure if they still are. Well, they sold their house recently because it was haunted. That's one of the facts. All right. The next fact is Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, has stated several times in interviews that he believes himself to be possessed by the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> All right? All right. And the third one is, during the filming of Three Men and a Baby, that's the uh, Ted Danson movie right. from a very long time ago, there is a ghost boy that was captured in the background of one of the scenes, which sparked a lot of rumors that they were on set of a haunted set. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then the fourth one is Kendrick Lamar claims that he was visited by the ghost of Tupac in his in a dream in his early career. I'm going to go with the Jerry Jones one because that one just sounds like it is completely made That's up. That's just out of the realm of possibility yes. to you. You just don't think that. I don't think that he would publicly on record say that he's Abraham Lincoln. Like he's Three the times. reincarnation of Abraham Lincoln. Three times. Well, it's just, I know, I think I've heard the Kendrick Lamar one and that does sound like something you would say. The first one with the Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox thing, I think they might even be married at this point and that sounds possible as well. The fact that they sold their house recently because they both believe it was haunted. yeah and then also you're saying three men and a baby that's such a random movie to pick out of all like 80s films that's that, I, that it just seems too specific so that's why i'm gonna go with the second one you're a hundred percent correct and during my research for trying to find out different ghost stories i found out that howie mandel has a second house behind his like actual house that he would stay in when his kids would sneeze <laughs> because of how much of a germaphobe he is well yeah he's got an obsessive compulsive disorder yeah. so it makes sense but it was also a crazy fact to learn <laughs> all right so i actually have a second game that we're going to transition into because this is a ghost show but it's also called school spirits mm -hmm. but it's not the only thing to ever be called school spirits i have three different scenarios here one of which is false the other two are true other titles use the same you know yeah so school spirits it was an American paranormal television series which aired on the Sci-Fi Channel. The first season premiered in 2012. The series traveled to schools across the country where they would reveal first-hand accounts of paranormal activity and experienced by students, teachers, parents, staff Sorry, one on of, the campuses. One of, these, one of these is true. One of them is false. Oh, and it's false. Okay, yes. so all the others are true. Three, okay, three a total, one of which is false. Right, what's so the second one? Two of them are true. Um, the second one is School Spirits is a poorly received 2017 movie about a girl who relocates to a small town only to find its inhabitants are ghosts. <laughs> Okay. And then okay. the third one is School Spirits is a classic 1980s Scream Queen movie starring a young Jennifer Connelly about a high school seance gone wrong where the cheerleaders summon the spirit of Jack the Ripper into the cheer captain. <laughs> uh, the second one sounds like a Goosebumps episode. The first one, so I'm going to go with the second one being false, though. The second one is true. Okay, this, there this... was a 2017 movie, and it was actually written by a partner pair of sisters um the kleppingers and the only reason i'm pointing that out is because this show the school spirit that we're about to talk about eventually i promise is also written by i think uh but i think they're married i think it's a married dude okay so mm -hmm. i'll go with the first one them being false okay no it's actually the third one it was that screen queen Connelly. yeah <laughs> jennifer Connolly was never in a movie like that and jack the ripper was never summoned into a cheerleader's body however i think that would make for a good movie the reason why i said the, the or the reason why i thought the third one was true is because when i read school spirits and i saw that it was on freeform i was expecting it to be kind of like a horror type of television show just by the name and just by from like kind of the posters i was seeing of it that's what i was expecting to kind of go into you didn't get the gist of like the kind of uh punny type thing because even the ti episode titles are puns i think one of them is um dead and confused there's the first episode which is called my so-called death right yeah so i mean uh, for the first episode recently murdered high schooler maddie um she's a ghost and it, it reminds me of ghosts a lot in that what in does that maddie TV look like show. she's like uh, a blonde, she's just a, right? yeah she's just like a normal kind of high schooler i think she's either like a junior or senior they probably say in the episode um and she kind of learns the way of being a she's ghost. 16 years old if i remember the plot oh so then correctly. maybe she's a sophomore in high school mm, maybe but, but anyways yeah she kind of learns 
a way of being a ghost by the help of Charlie. He is a ghost that... So one thing is, is that when you die, you re remain the same age throughout. So really, there have been multiple people that have died at this school. I am aware of how ghosts work, yes. Well, no, but like literally they're not able to leave the high school at mm -hmm. all. They're only able to stay in that one area. And again, it's like in time. They stay where they like, die. And yeah. from the limited trailer, I saw that it's kind of like detention where um, like they just have group therapy sessions together. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's actually led by Mr. Martin. He's kind of a therapy ghost. He was a teacher that died one? there. Yeah. yeah. How um, did he die? Do I you know. I don't think that they go through a lot of people's deaths. So it's that. like the show Ghosts, where we don't know. We kind of can assume how some people die, but we're not sure until they get their own episode. Well, arc. the main plot yeah. is trying to figure out how Maddie died because she believes that she was murdered. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the show is going to try and pull something off where it's like, oh, actually, it was no one. It was just, I don't know, she like slipped she or something like that. Yeah, because she died in a boiler room. Even in the second episode, or it might have been the first episode, there's like blood on the wall that matches her DNA. You know... I used to hang out in the boiler room in my high school all the time, and it was just a like a fun place to. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like, I, what school has a boiler room? <laughs> I don't know, and I don't even know how she ended up in it. Basically, okay. while she's speaking to the other ghosts, she's trying to figure out hints of maybe who killed her, and then she unexpectedly learns that she has a power by the end of the first episode, where she's actually able to speak to the outside world. Really, Wait, to so her is she the friend. only ghost who can do yes, so? Yes, the only ghost. In fact, to Charlie, it was basically unheard of because all the other ghosts believes that you can't cross worlds you even see in the first episode that uh one of her living friends nicole is like putting up posters because they don't know that maddie's dead yet they Whoa, just so they, they haven't even found yes, the body yes they haven't found the body because the body was moved from the boiler room but she's like 100 percent dead however the town is still trying to look for her mm -hmm, she's a missing and, person and so yeah so uh nicole is basically playing up these posters and maddie takes one of the posters down and you see that like when she takes the poster down it actually just relocates into the locker because it basically yeah they can't, can't cross worlds yeah they can't affect it too much so that's why in the end of the first episode it's supposed to be a surprise that maddie is able to speak to simon her other living friend who is going to try and figure out who exactly murdered maddie Maddie and all the like kind of different question marks going into it mm -hmm. one of my biggest pros about the show was uh i thought that like i said it was going to be a pretty little liars i thought multiple people were going I think to it was die. executively produced by the pretty little liars not team. surprised yeah I, I mean same channel as well uh, at least at the original show but this was a pro so what, what were you yeah so to? but it wasn't actually like that at all they do focus it's really more about the mystery who killed maddie it's not like oh this person's going to die this episode and then it really wasn't focused on the character death is it much. a dark mystery or is it like a Scooby Doo. No, mystery. this is this is like the most Scooby Doo show ever. I feel but like better it's than Velma. Better than <laughs> yes, I think anything is better than Velma. But really, this is more like young adult than I think I was expecting it to be. In that way, another pro is the fact that it kind of has a colorful set. The set design is cool. It reminded me a lot of Saved by the Bell reboot. It's, it's also I think better than Nancy Drew, or at least the premise is more interesting to me. Like when I first heard about it, I, I would have probably given more props to it if I couldn't think of other shows that were related to it, like Ghosts, the UK and the US version. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Veronica Mars in there. Yeah, I can see that. But, like, overall, I was actually interested in watching one or two of the episodes because it just sounded like a cool premise. I mean, it might sound like a cool premise, but this show, it's... Is I it I Devolve? I'm, I mean, tropes. it's not it's not the fact that really any of the episodes I thought were actually ever really that good. Mm -hmm. I do have like kind of different parts that I like like Wally. He's my favorite character. He's kind of a jock that ended up dying, um, but he has like a good sense of humor and he's co the coolest of all the ghosts. Uh, some of the characters that I couldn't stand though were people like Rhonda. She is again like a really snarky ghost. She's like just kind of mad all the time. She even sets fire to a field in the third episode. The show kind of evolves into like the the whole entire uh, rules that they're setting up it doesn't really seem like they ever they're follow. following them <laughs> yeah um it, it, it's supposed to be a big deal that they've all died at different time periods though so it would be interesting to see like a gen z personality versus a millennial versus a gen x and like <laughs> do they do that at all uh not really they not haven't that played much. with that that it's, feels like that would be a lot of it's fun. not really like the ghosts ever actually fight each other that much Rhonda's supposed to be the rebel of the group but she died because of her guidance counselor i think in like the 90s I what think do you mean by by her guy she guidance goes counselor. into it in the third episode episode but i think her and her guidance counselor had some type of relationship oh, okay. and then he she like was going to be going into a different school really not important it was like really just one of those scenes where she's speaking for like five minutes and it's supposed to give you kind of backstory as to why she's acting like a bitch the whole time do you remember the other show that we did about high schoolers who ended up dying and then you followed them them in their ghost forms 
Paraiso or Par- like oh that was, yeah, or something. That was, it was that a was Spanish a series different that we language. did a long time ago. Yeah, and he died in a fire, I think, yeah. at the end. And it was also sort of a mystery. Does that at all relate to this? Uh, you could. I think that School Spirits is better in the sense that, like, I just like the characters more. I remember with Paradise, it was even more hard to follow because of how many, like, different storylines were going on. And, and like, uh, one thing that I was expecting to see in this episode that I didn't see is Which even episode? happening the in Ghosts. The second one or the All, all three. Okay. I thought they were going to address this somehow. Is that, you know how, like, in Ghosts, when uh, one of the people walks through one of the ghosts, like, it's supposed uh-huh. to, like, have some type of smell to it it's or a some chilling, type of thing sulfur smelling yeah thing. same thing happens in paradise where someone like runs through the main character and like the main character is kind of weirded out by it all here they don't address that at all <laughs> and i was glad that i didn't have to see like another one of those scenes where it's like you see when someone another runs ghost origin you, story yeah something like that um what do they talk about though well like for 40 or however many years that they've been dead like what do they do all day well in the third episode and it was one of my favorite points even though it didn't follow the rules like i was talking about is they had uh this thing called like a field day or like field trip where basically the ghosts go around to really um kind of this like open field that the school has and just wreak havoc on everything you mean like the football field yeah like okay. they like they're like knocking down water coolers and they're like stabbing these uh so they can still haunt, people use. haunt things sort well of, you see that was it... that was the part where it didn't really seem like it was following the first episode because again Rhonda or sorry not Rhonda Maddie takes off a poster the poster just relocates back up but somehow they're able to like knock down all these water coolers with a golf cart and like start uh like just uh completely damaging these soda machines mm-hmm. and yet somehow it's just able to work but since Maddie is the main character do you not only see her present which is her as a ghost but also see like a ton of backflashes because from the interview that Peyton listed she's the one who played her and she's mostly known from I think not Karate Kid what's the Karate Kid name show so uh, the uh Cobra Kai Cobra Kai that's right um that uh she felt like she was playing two different roles because one is her beforehand and one is a more naive version of her and then now like one who's figuring it out in the first two episodes they have flashbacks but really the flashbacks come to play in the third episode basically what we learned there is Maddie was in a car crash it was her mother that caused the crash but they she didn't want the police to take away her mom so she framed it as her being the one that hit this tree even if she might get her license taken away and she calls this teacher his name is mr anderson um it's even revealed at the end of the second episode that mr anderson might be a villain but uh but in this class mr anderson like the matrix mr anderson okay people call him mr a as well and basically he helps her uh frame it the way that it's supposed to be other storylines that take place are xavier he's uh he was maddie's boyfriend um before she died Mm -hmm. and then what happened was uh, he's not the one who's able to see her though no simon's the only one that's able to see like any of the ghosts really only her yeah i was about to say can he really see all the ghosts no in fact like there's one uh line that simon says later on the third episode that i thought was a good point he's like how many people have died at this school because he's learning for the first time that maddie has been speaking to other ghosts Mm -hmm. and it seems like the school is trying to cover it up or or something like that It, it, it goes off the rails in the sense where in the second episode Really, that's focusing on uh, this, the TV show is trying so hard to make you believe that Xavier, who is, again, Maddie's boyfriend, yes. is the killer. Like, mm-hmm. they want you to believe this. For some reason, he has her phone in his bag. Uh, the, the dad is, like, trying to help him, like, kind of stay out of trouble so he doesn't want him to go to school. Yeah. Like, they're trying so hard, and it was just so obvious that that wasn't the case. And at the very end of the second episode, um, they, like, go to this car, like, either mechanic or room that the school had because that's where Maddie and Xavier were making out one time. Sure. They were just trying to find clues. And for some reason, Mr. Anderson is there. And now at the end of the third episode, Mr. Anderson has a ton of money stashed in his uh, classroom and so now it's like mr anderson for some reason has something to do with maddie's death it just gets so crazy it's like what is going on with this tv show it seemed like it was at least grounded in reality in the first episode and then kind of what was just let loose afterwards yeah i don't think it's going as far as like riverdale but it's definitely it reminds me a little bit of the watchful eye where it's like one mystery leads to the next mystery and everybody has to be a suspect at some point that's the same network as well right paramount plus i think that uh, oh paramount Paramount Plus, you know, yeah. it's just uh, they, yeah, they so, own by Viacom. Yeah, you They're know, by Viacom. honestly, that's the thing. I thought that this was a free form show, but now that you say Paramount Plus, yeah, it says that at the very beginning of every episode. But this, this the School Spirits felt like it would have been perfectly placed for that network. Yeah, any sort of that's CW the reason show. why. Yeah, I got confused because it seems like a lot of 
a lot of like freeform TV shows, and it's similar with this, is that they always have a character that is one trait. You know, for example, with Charlie, he's supposed to, he was like a gay ghost, but mm-hmm. he's supposed to kind of be the person who's really helpful, uh, maybe a little bit of the comic relief. Again, Wally's supposed to be pure out comic relief. Mr. Martin's supposed to be the ghost kind of holding the, the glue that's holding like all I this I mean, that's what comedies together. do, though, is that they have to introduce you and it takes a little while to acclimate. So what they do is they give every character like one big trait to go off. But of. that's the thing. This isn't even really that much of a comedy. Sure, there are comedic parts to it. I would think it would be, yeah. With but this, it's like, really, it's comedy. really trying to be a mystery mm-hmm. like when you're going into xavier's is it story like nancy line, drew that bad though like i would i wouldn't say it's as bad as nancy drew i never saw the episode it was itself. just really corny is what i'm saying i like, mean and for base for like a 12 year old audience if it that's feel like it is basically for this as well well the production company behind this has done things like uh to all the boys that series and oh, also right, yeah. smosh the movie Sm- <laughs> oh wow but they also did pen 15 which has been received well and that spontaneous movie which was kind of interesting is that the one where like the kids blow up yeah where the kids brains blow up and that was produced by awesomeness tv so it, it kind of it, it is definitely for a younger oh geared i will say audience. i will say i was glad to see awesomeness tv's name show up though because if i remember correctly that was a youtube channel that i think has like expanded now into a production company was bought out for like i think millions of dollars yeah but i remember watching their (laughs) i remember watching their old like uh videos i think there's like a prank where some guy dresses up in like an apple like uh uniform and like breaks iphones in front of them anyways going back to the episode xavier has maddie's phone in his backpack they show through flashbacks to how they were together but then xavier through one of his periods went to his car he was about to ditch and maddie was a little confused by this so she runs out and she kind of confronts him and is like why are you leaving why weren't you telling me any of this and he's like you know i was just uh kind of going to get like a she coffee cheating or, something or something like that yeah that's basically what happens okay. she she walks I mean, back it's just in. all the drama you can think of. well no but it, it got even stupider than that like she walks back in she like looks at xavier as he's like texting on his phone in his car and then she gets a text and then the, and then her phone goes dead so she's not able to read it but apparently xavier sent the wrong text to maddie which was saying to claire who's the person that she he was cheating on her with to to like come to his car so they can oh like leave gosh. it just got kind of ridiculous after yeah. there a mile okay so overall what would you give the show i mean i would i can't say that i won't watch the rest of the show because much like with pretty little liars original sin you i watched did every episode no <laughs> definitely did not do that but i did skip through a lot of the episodes Episodes and did want to see who the killer was by the end and did and i so probably like will do the, i'll yeah. probably do the same thing with this show as well and i'll give it the same score because i mean yes yeah, things to enjoying it but i didn't think it was anything special i'd give it a five out of ten so it doesn't pass yeah i wouldn't say so huh well the um reviews have been pretty positive about it variety said school spirits is a charming teenage ghost story uh hollywood reporter said schools Spirits review bland Paramount Plus YA drama may give you a ghost fatigue. So that was the one negative that See, I found. That's, yeah, I, I do think I agree with that, though. It was very bland. I didn't feel like there was anything new in this show. Even the even though the, it is entertaining seeing Maddie kind of talk to Simon and him like finding different pieces, like her phone being broken and all this stuff, that is mildly entertaining. But everything else is just kind of meh. Mm. Collider said School Spirits review Peyton List leads a supernatural show full of mystery and heart. Uh, Decider said stream it. It has like a seven point something on imdb and how many reviews that, on imdb um i don't remember but it looked like honestly the hollywood reporter one was the only negative one i found but i don't think a ton of places have reviewed it yet um they said uh, or one of the big positives was that they don't hammer the rules of ghosts over your head so they kind of reiterate your point from earlier um you can touch but you can't change anything in their world mm-hmm. except for the water coolers apparently <laughs> All right. Anything else that you wanted to say? Uh, you already mentioned your favorite character. It, it also reminds me a little bit of Dead Like Me. I feel like you can't not talk yeah. about the same shows because that that deals with a group who then has a job to do once they are ghosts, like they're reapers almost. Do you know how many episodes this season is supposed to be? It's supposed to be eight or ten, it feels like one of those two. Uh, no, yeah. I don't, but I, I do have a question. It does, um, does it feel as if, like, once the person or the people there, the ghosts there, have figured out why they're there, they'll, like, transcend or yeah, ascend? I think, no, I think that is something, because they say something like that in the first episode. Like, will um, there be a door that they just walk through and then they're, like, disappear? We don't see anyone ascend, but Maddie does say to the 
it goes, he's like, or says to Mr. Martin specifically, she's like, you know, for people that you're supposed to be helping, there's a lot of people still here. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people still in the group. And I think that that is supposed to say that, yeah, once you figure out your purpose, you're supposed to, <laughs> you're supposed to leave, but we don't see it happen yet. In, in like a decade, do you think that Peyton List, the main character of this, is going to be like a big name out there in Hollywood? I mean, I haven't heard. Like, of is she gonna make that show. jump? Like, it, does she have the ability from what you've seen? Yeah, I mean, acting wasn't really a problem with this show. I mean, I thought that everyone like performed fine. The actors are good. It's just really, I think the script needed to be uh, more. I, guess, I think they're making it into some sort of comic. Like a, uh, it, it was weird because when I was looking it up, trying to figure out where the um, two creators, Megan and Nate Trinrud had come from it didn't really have much from them in the past mm-hmm. uh but they were like making a uh, what's the word something comic like a live action kind i forget what it's called but yeah so keep your eyes open for that thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode hope you enjoyed this one bye bye, bye.